Good day buddies. The best months for catching queen ants to start a colony had passed. And it's time for us to update on the queens we've caught. During those months, we only managed to get one trip to hunt. And only able to turn on the black light on my backyard, once in the month of April, and once in May. I've been so busy those months, and so unlucky that rain keep coming on my free days. So, we're not able to do a lot, but we still manage to catch at least 10 different species of queen ants. Which most of them had been featured on stories. Anyway, welcome back buddies. And for those new to the channel, you're also welcome to D-Colony. Let's start the update on one of my favorite genus, Tetramorium. Under this, we caught four different species of queens. Three of them had been raised using a semi-claustral manner, which I only started feeding after the first larvae emerged. And slowly grow a colony, week by week. Most of them needed a new test tube as the founding one, got really messy in the first few months. Along with the new test tube, we also introduced their first DIY out world. Which will help us prevent the test tube to get dirty again. Let's meet the first successful colony. This one had the slowest growth, which is on their fifth month now. Having only 30 plus workers. Two single queen test tube setup of this species had failed, but luckily we made this three queen colony flourished. Which I didn't really, expected, as I only made a three queen setup cause we ran out of test tube. Anyway, even for ant keeping OGs. It's not that easy to spot the queens, due to having almost the same size as the workers. But luckily they have this slightly darker, and larger thorax. And with wing scars of course. But the easiest way to find them is through the ocelli, or the eyes on the queen's forehead. Which they also use to detect light, and movements. The first queen is here. And the second one is located over here. And the third is definitely here. The colony is now used on having an outworld buddies, and also established a nice garbage area. I can say that the colony is doing great, as of the moment. Let's check the next one, which is just beside them. This is a darker species of Tetramorium, which I suspect is the same species with our two year old colony living on the space station and farm. Anyway, they started producing alerts early on their third month. Which multiplied the queens of the colony, as they also shed their wings. And since then, the colony established to rapid growth. They're just on sixth month now having this massive number of workers, and huge pile of broods. And upcoming additional queens to reproduce even quicker. Anyway, let's get to the third Tetramorium colony which is just nearby as well. They are dark red in color, and have a decent number for a six months old colony. They still have only one queen, and didn't produce any alerts or reproductives yet. I, wonder if this colony will also inbreed in the future. Some of you may tell that this are Tetramorium bicarinatum. But they are absolutely not, as they are too small in size. But anyway. The fourth and last Tetramorium Queen is definitely, a Tetramorium Bicarinatum Queen. We just caught her few days ago, and we will kinda raise her using claustral manner, but with occasional feeding. I used to keep a colony of these one before, and I'm hoping this one, will also get a successful founding. So we can have a variety of Tetramorium colonies on the channel. We'll be making a separate video about this colonies, and we'll try to identify their own respective species. Anyway, aside from Tetramoriums, we also caught a bunch of different species of Camponitus queens, using black light once in the month of May. We let go almost half of it, as we ran out of test tube this time. Camponitus queens will have their first worker normally at the second month. So what I do is check them on the first month, some will be dead this time, and some had larvae, but some without any progress at all. Which I used to name as the delayed queens. 
This time I feed honey to the zero progress queens, to boost them up. And look at this huge queen as she started shedding her wings, after consuming the honey. Wings removal is a great sign specially on Camponitis, that the queen is now ready to reproduce. Anyway, let's check the successful queens. The first one is this huge, and dark. And as expected for a large queen, this species have a massive size of nanitics as well. It's not been easy raising this colony, as they keep dumping garbage on the water reservoir's cotton. And since the arrival of the nanitics, they are on their third test tube now. I also end up giving them an outworld early. Hoping for, them to establish a garbage area outside the test tube. Anyway. Time to move to the next one, which is a Camponitus variegatus colony. They're doing great so far, and haven't been delayed. They also have their own mini DIY outworld now, and almost having 20 workers. Some people may mistake the workers as yellow crazy ants, as they have kinda similar looks. But of course this ants are much way bigger in terms of size, and later on will have an even much bigger workers, known as the soldiers. Of course, we are hoping for them to reach that stage. Anyway, we also have this tiny black carpenter ants, which also have their own outworld now. As I'm also dealing with their garbage disposal. But on all of the Camponitus queens, what I'm looking forward the most is this light colored queen which I never kept before. One of these queens reach larval stage, but never made it to worker. Up to this moment I've been trying to figure it out, so we can have a better chance next year, if happens no one of this got successful. Anyway. Let's move to the next one, which is an Anoshitus queen. We raise her on a test tube set up with soil, which I think is the best for the species. And along with occasional feeding, we are also adding springtails to the setup to deal with the molds. And as an additional food source for the queen as well. The queen did great, and now having two workers, one of them had just he closed. They also, have this good amount of broods. Anyway. The next colonies belong to these two Nilandaria queens, which I ended up merging after few months. The merge went well, but the two queens never shared the same chamber. So in refreshing the test tubes, we also give them test tubes for each queen. They have about a hundred workers now, so giving them an outworld is also greatly considered. I guessed we will need to introduce them to an actual, and farm anytime soon. Speaking of ant farm, the next colony will be the first one to get a proper nest. Whose queen landed to my shoulder, coming from her nuptial flight. We've already seen this right Jamimex colony recently buddies on the past videos. They're on third month now, having a couple hundreds of workers. I assume the colony will reach a thousand workers, around the fifth month. Anyway. I only manage one trip to hunt queen ants outside my area, and we were able to catch a spiny ant queen, Iridomimex queen, and some others. Even though I would love to have them on the channel, they all failed on the founding stage. The only successful queen from the trip, is this Grimatogaster. Which we also featured on a short video, on the mini arboreal setup build. This our small size species, of acrobat ants buddies. As the worker size here are only half of the size of our Crimatogaster ants, living on the acrobat tower. Aside of their small size, the colony is also slow growing. They're five months now, but still below 30 workers. Anyway, onto the next queen, we have this very prolific yellow crazy ant queen. I don't know if you already heard something like this buddies, but this queen doesn't know how to open the cocoons of her babies. Her colony should be doing great now, if only all the workers on the cocoons made it. This is already the second batch of cocoons, that the queen have discarded. I open up some of them, and saw dark dead workers. The queen had this healthy new batch of cocoons again. This time I will try to help her open one of them. And let's see on the future update, what will happen. Anyway. Let's move to the next one. On this queen is where I'm most excited about. 
as it's my first time to catch, and even see Eucalyptomy McSant. We featured her on a short video before, and just few weeks after that, I caught an additional queen of the species again. I raised one of them on a normal test tube setup, and one test tube with soil set up. And the queen made a chamber like this on their soil. My approach on this one is semi-claustral, which I plan to feed her after the arrival of the first larvae. But unfortunately, both of them died several weeks later. I assume they are not mated, or I messed this up big time. But I'm not giving up yet buddies, I will try again next time and hopefully we can make it through. As this species is now added on my dream colony to keep. This is it for all, the queen's update, that I think might interest you buddies. I just hope you have learned something from this video guys. Be a genie for the first time, by granting my wish in tapping the like and share button, that would help a lot. This is D Colony, saying goodbye. For now, but hoping to see you on my next videos.